This is the sixth section of the number theory chapter. And here we're going to be looking at Fermat's little theorem. So the first thing I want to mention here is that where I write down P, it's going to be representing a prime number. Where I write down A or B, it's going to be representing a positive integer. OK, so the first rule says this. If I have a prime that divides an integer A, then this statement is true. A, that integer to the power of the prime, is congruent to A, the integer, under mod P. So we can use this rule if A is a multiple of P, multiple of P, a multiple of a prime. So that's stating basically this the other way around. So here's an example. Let's say we had uh, 42 to the power um, 7. Let's make that, to, yeah, 7 is congruent to 42. Got to learn how to write 42 mod 7. OK, so let's have a look at this. Here's my prime P, which is here. And A is a multiple of 7. In other words, 7 can divide into 42. Yeah, if I've got my times table right. So that's the first rule. So the second rule is if P does not divide A. So in other words, A is not a multiple of the prime, then this rule is true. A to the power the prime minus one is congruent to one under mod P. So here we'll just write down that this value of A here is not a multiple of a prime, a multiple of prime P. So here's an example. Let's say I had 8 to the power 16 is congruent to 1 under mod 17. So we'll look at this. 17 is a prime. This power is 1 less than the prime. Um, 8 is not a multiple of 17. 17 does not divide 8. And it's going to be congruent to 1. So that's our second rule. Now, we can take this second rule here and we can use it to help us solve some modulus equations. So let's say um, we had a modulus equation of this form. It doesn't always work, um, but if we've got a modulus equation of this form where the modulus is a prime, yeah, and we're trying to solve this type um, of equation and a and b are are positive integers then um, by Fermat's little theorem a to the power of the prime minus 2 is a multiplicative inverse of that equation. Now let's see what happens if we multiply both sides by the multiplicative uh, inverse. So if we times both sides of that um, modulo equation, I think I keep saying modulus and modulo equation, by a to the power p minus 2, then what happens to the left hand side is we're just going to be left with x. That's what happens when you multiply by a multiplicative inverse, then the other side will be a to the power p minus 2 times by b mod p. So that's going to enable us to um, solve this type of equation if the modulus there is a prime number. OK, I've written both the rules down. We'll see which one we, we need to use. Find the least residue of 3 to the power 202 mod 11. Now in this question here, 
um, P is equal to 11, A is uh, equal to 3. Um, does P divide A? No, it doesn't. 11 does not divide 3. So by Fermat's little theorem, we'll use the second one. So we'll use this one uh, here because P does not divide A. So what we can write down is that A3 to the power uh, P minus one. So that's gonna be P to the power 10. Let's just put P minus one like that. Is congruent to one uh, in mod 11. So that's three to the power 10 is congruent to one in mod 11. Now, if we raise both sides to the power 20, so if I do three to the power 10 to the power 20, well, that's basically the same as three to the power 200, isn't it? That's gonna be congruent to one to the power 20 in mod 11. So, Basically, 3 to the power 200 is congruent to 1 in mod 11. Um, we want to get to the power 3, uh, 202, so we'll times both sides by 3 squared. So then we'll have 3 to the power 200 times by 3 squared, which is 9, is congruent to 1 times by 3 squared under mod 11. So that will give us 3 to the power 202 is congruent to 9 under mod 11. And 9 is the least residue because you can't, if you take off 11s, you're going to get to a negative number. Um, so the least residue is 9. Is 9. OK, so we want to find the solution to this linear congruence, this linear equation here. Um, and I've written down the application of Fermat's la uh, little theorem, I was going to say last theorem, little theorem that we can apply to solving this. So let's start by writing down the values of A, B and P, which is 11. And we can apply this theorem if P does not divide A, so we'll try that. So does 11 divide it seven? So the answer is no, it doesn't. So we should suppose we should write since 11 doesn't divide seven. So since 11 doesn't divide seven, the multiplicative inverse, multiplicative inverse of this equation is it's going to be a p to the um, or a to the power p minus 2 and that is 7 to the power 11 minus 2 which is 7 to the power 9 so we'll write the equation down 7x is congruent to 10 mod 11 so we're going to times both sides by 7 to the power 9 this side will become x that's what the multiplicative inverse does then the other side is going to be 7 to the power 9 times by 10 under mod 11. now we want to break down this 7 to the power 9 into a calculation which i can do so let's try for example 7 cubed we could work out 7 cubed and cube that times 10 mod 11. Now 7 cubed, so I'll use my calculator, that's 3, 4, 3. Actually, it's, we need to write this as separate working over here. So yeah, 7 cubed is 3, 4, 3. Now we need to change it to mod 11 because it's basically mod 10, isn't it? So in mod 3, um, 11 goes into 343 
31 times, so it's 31 times 11, and it has a remainder of, or residual, um, of 2. So, we can write 7 cubed as 2 under mod 11. That's going to be its remainder. So this will become x is congruent to 2 cubed times 10 under mod 11. Uh, 2 cubed is 8, um, which I can write as 80. So I've got x is congruent to 80 under mod 11. And if I do my working over here, uh, 80 is equal to, let's think, 7 times 11 plus 3. So there's my remainder of 3. So 80 is congruent to 3 in mod 11. So that's my least residual answer. Uh, because if I add 11 to that, obviously it's going to go above 11. So x is congruent to 3 mod 11 will be my answer or solution for this equation. This question here says find a remainder when 2 to the power 1000 is divided by 13. So whenever you see this divided by something, it tells you what modulus you're working in, a modulo you're working in. So this is going to be a mod 13 question. Right, so we have the rules here. We just need to decide which one we're going to use. So in this question, the value of A is 2 and the value of P is 13. So since P does it divide A? No, P does not divide A. Um, then we'll be using the second rule here. A to the power P minus 1, so A, which is 2, to the power P minus 1, 12, is um, congruent to 1 under mod 13. Right, now we need to get to the power 1000, so we want to try and get as close as we can to it. Now, if I raise both sides to the power 83, which I can do with one, no problem, then two to the 12 to the power 83 actually becomes two to the power 996. So I've got one to the power 83, mod 13. So I end up with two to the power of 12 times 18, which is 996 is congruent to 1 mod 13. Now all I need to do is multiply both sides by 2 to the power 4, which is nice and easy. So 2 to the power 996 times by 2 to the power 4, that's going to be 2 to the power 1000. And then 1 times 2 to the power 4 mod 13. So 2 to the power 4, 2, 4, 8, 16. So 2 to the power 1000 is going to be 1 times 16, which is 16 mod 13. We want the least uh, residue answer. So we'll take away 13 um, from 16, which leaves 3. So what's that telling us? When we divide it by 13, the remainder is 3. So when 2 to the 1000 is divided by 13, the remainder, the residue, is 3. So you should now be able to do exercise 1F on pages 27 to 28. So here's a recap. So first of all, if we um, know that a prime number P divides A, so P is our prime, um, and A 
and b these are going to be our positive integers so if p divides a prime or a is a multiple of a prime then we can apply this rule the integer to the power of the prime is congruent to the integer under the mod of the prime if the prime does not divide the integer in other words the integer is not a multiple of a prime then we can apply this rule a to the power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 under mod p and if we have a modulus equation like this a x is congruent to b mod p or under mod p then the multiplicative inverse multiplicative inverse is a p or a to the power p minus 2 and if we apply that inverse then what we will get if we times both sides by the multiplicative inverse We'll actually get x is congruent to a to the power of the prime minus 2 times by b under mod p the prime.